The shifting geopolitical landscape of the 21st century has produced an unexpected industrial phenomenon in the global defense market. For decades, the standard for heavy artillery was defined by European precision engineering and American industrial scale. However, a significant realignment has occurred, centering not on the Rhine or the Potomac, but on the Korean Peninsula. The dominance of the K-9 Thunder self-propelled howitzer in the international arms market represents more than just a commercial success for Hanwha Aerospace. It signifies a fundamental shift in military procurement philosophy. Nations are no longer prioritizing theoretical peak performance on paper, but are instead valuing logistical sustainability, delivery speed, and industrial reliability. In this context, the K-9 has emerged as the pragmatic standard of the free world, occupying a market position analogous to a ubiquitous, reliable utility vehicle that dominates global logistics through sheer durability and availability. The sheer scale of the K-9 program provides the strongest evidence for this shift. Current market analysis indicates that the South Korean platform commands approximately 60% of the global self-propelled howitzer export market. This figure is not merely statistical, it represents a de facto standardization across the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and key Indo-Pacific allies. The User Club, which now spans from Estonia and Norway in the frozen north to Australia in the Southern Hemisphere creates a network effect that competitors in Germany and France have failed to replicate. When a nation acquires the K-9, they are not simply purchasing a weapon system. They are entering an established ecosystem where spare parts, ammunition compatibility, and maintenance protocols are shared among 10 different nations. This interoperability offers a strategic advantage that boutique, low-production European systems cannot match. The comparison with the German-made PZH-2000 is unavoidable and illustrative of this doctrinal clash. From a purely technical standpoint, the German system is often regarded as the pinnacle of artillery engineering, capable of slightly higher burst fire rates and possessing sophisticated automation. However, this sophistication comes with a heavy price tag and a complexity that can become a liability in prolonged high-intensity conflict. The PZH-2000 is akin to a luxury high-performance vehicle, exceptional when functioning perfectly but demanding in terms of maintenance. In contrast, the K-9 Thunder operates on a philosophy of pragmatic ruggedness. It delivers roughly 90% of the capability of its German rival, but does so at approximately half the acquisition cost, with a unit price estimated between 10 million and 12 million United States dollars, depending on the support package. More importantly, the K-9 is designed to operate in extreme environments with a level of mechanical reliability that allows for easier field repairs, a critical factor for armies preparing for attrition warfare. The most decisive factor in the K-9's recent victories, particularly in the massive contracts with Poland, is not found in the ballistics data, but in the production charts. The conflict in Ukraine exposed a critical weakness in the Western defense industrial base, the inability to scale production rapidly. While European manufacturers quoted delivery timelines spanning three to five years for new orders, South Korea demonstrated the capacity to deliver functional battalions within months. The arrival of the first batch of K-9s in Poland shortly after contract signature was a shock to the global defense industry. It highlighted that South Korea has maintained a hot production line, supported by a robust civilian heavy industry supply chain.
While Western Europe had allowed its capacity to atrophy in the post-Cold War, peace dividend era. In the current security climate, availability has become the most important quality of any weapon system. A critical evolution in the K-9 program, finalized in late 2025, has further cemented its export potential, the achievement of complete engine independence. Historically, the platform relied on German-designed MTU engines produced under license. This reliance subjected South Korean exports to German government approval, a diplomatic bottleneck that previously complicated potential sales to Middle Eastern nations due to Berlin's strict export policies. The successful development and integration of a domestic 1,000-horsepower engine by STX Engine eliminates this vulnerability. This technical milestone is strategically profound. It grants Seoul the full autonomy to export the system to nations like Saudi Arabia, Egypt, or the United Arab Emirates without third-party vetoes. This Koreanization of critical subsystems transforms the K9 from a licensed assembler's product into a fully sovereign capability, opening the door to the lucrative Middle Eastern and North African markets. Furthermore, South Korea's export strategy distinguishes itself through a willingness to transfer technology, a practice often resisted by American and German suppliers. The Blue Ocean strategy employed here involves empowering the customer. Turkey produces the T-155 Fertina based on the K-9, Poland is developing the K-9PL variant, and Australia is assembling the AS-9 Huntsman domestically. The recent milestone in December 2025, where the Australian Army conducted its first live fire tests of the AS-9, on Australian soil at the Puckapunyal training area underscores the success of this model. By allowing client nations to build domestic industrial capacity, South Korea builds long-term diplomatic partnerships rather than simple vendor-client relationships. The upcoming rollout of Australian assembled units from the Geelong facility in early 2026 will serve as tangible proof that buying Korean aid's domestic job creation, a powerful political selling point for governments worldwide. This wave of expansion shows no signs of cresting, with new markets opening in Southeast Asia and Eastern Europe. Recent reports indicate advanced negotiations with Romania, which has finalized its decision to join the user club further cementing the K-9's dominance on NATO's eastern flank. Simultaneously, attention has turned to Vietnam, where modernization efforts for the artillery forces are underway. Discussions regarding a potential package estimated at 276 million United States dollars for approximately 20 to 30 systems suggest that Hanoi is looking to diversify its arsenal away from traditional Russian reliance. If concluded, such a deal would be momentous, replacing aging Soviet-era stocks with modern Korean systems and demonstrating the K-9's ability to bridge the gap between different geopolitical alignments. Ultimately, the success of the K-9 Thunder is a reflection of the changing nature of warfare and defense economics. In an era where high-intensity conflict has returned to the forefront of military planning, armies are relearning the value of quantity, sustainability, and logistics. The intricate, handcrafted approach of traditional European manufacturers struggles to meet the demands of rearmament. South Korea has effectively positioned itself as the new arsenal of democracy for conventional land systems, offering a solution that balances advanced capability with mass producibility. The K-9 Gu does not need to be the single most advanced artillery piece on the planet to be the most successful. It simply needs to be the most available, 
the most reliable and the most cost-effective. By securing over half the global market, the K9 Thunder has proven that in the modern defense industry, the ability to deliver hardware when and where it is needed is the ultimate strategic capability.